Hello everyone, today we're working on a 1999 Chevrolet Tahoe. We're doing the rear differential service on it. And what we're going to use for fluid today is a AMSO Severe Gear 75W90. Uh, resist thermal runaway. Uh, for those of you who have uh, three quarter ton and one ton trucks, we have a 75W140 for those. Um, excellent gear lube. Uh, it'll flow down to about 40 below zero and handle about twice the heat of petroleum based oils. So excellent fluid for that. We're going to Go to the rear of the vehicle and uh, we'll get back with you. Okay, we're under the vehicle here on, at the rear differential. And one of the things I do before I take off that differential cover is I clean all the way around the outside of that flange, any dirt that's in it. And there's brake lines here. Let me bring those back up. There's a brake line here that's attached in two spots right here at the top. And what I do is I'll take those out and Basically those brake lines are pretty flexible. I'll bend them up out of the way get them back out of the way So that they're not in the way for a wire brush and I just take a wire brush up around the top and uh, Knock everything loose that I can and Then I take a blow gun With compressed air and I just blow all around there That's before I take any of the bolts out before I take anything loose and that's to get all that dirt load off the top Because if you take this pan off up on top and there's a lot of dirt load up there It's gonna fall right into your differential right where you don't want it in there in the gear set So I've already done that on this one and I've had to cover off and uh, Basically well if you have trouble getting that cover off they're stuck on with silicone sometimes from the factory It just depends this particular one had a gasket on it from the factory and what I'll do is I'll use a uh, this is my old beater gasket scraper, and I'll use a hammer on that. It's got a full tang on it, so it goes all the way through. But uh, put that between the the casting and and the actual uh, steel cover, and then I'll take a hammer and just beat it beat it in until it loosens it up, and I can kind of pry it off. And I'll recheck wherever I've uh, did that once I get the cover off to make sure I haven't got any. Uh, Got any deformations they're all straightened out if I have to but usually it comes off pretty nice so this one here we've uh, I got one bolt hanging in there yet we can take that off and uh, that cover out of the way and once you got the cover off the fluid pretty well drains out and what I'll do from that point is I'll take some shop towels and with shop towels, <clears throat> I got to clean that gasket off on that casting surface there. And I want that nice and clean. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll tuck in some towels in on top as much as I can. Because I want to keep as much of the dirt load out of that differential as I can. Okay. And then what I'll do is take my gasket scraper. I got one that I have sharpened. And I'll go up and scrape all that off. And when I'm done, I'll take a die grinder. And finish it all up so it's nice and clean all the way around so we'll get that cleaned up and we'll get back with you okay one other thing I didn't mention is some of these differentials will have a drain plug at the bottom of that differential if they have one it's going to be right here by the bottom of that flange this particular one doesn't have one so the only way you're going to change that fluid is to drop that rear cover that we've done and um, but always check to make sure that you don't have the drain plug some of them do some of them don't it just depends on the year and the model and what I use uh, to scrape off that gasket material is a nice sharp uh, scraper. I'll sharpen that up on a, on a file clamped in a vise and get almost a razor edge on it. And I'll go around and, and uh, I've, got the, I've got the differential covered up as much as I can so that we don't get the dirt and rust and stuff from that flange on it. And once I get that gasket all off like I have it now, I'll hit it with a, uh, I've got a die grinder and uh, the die grinder's got a, a roll lock disc on it. It's a 3M product. I'll kind of show you what a brand new one looks like. They make them in a couple different uh, grits. This is the coarsest one. It's actually a type of a plastic is what it is. And uh, works beautiful for cleaning up that surface area so you can get the uh, silicone seal into it here. And that's what we'll be using as a synthetic uh, powertrain resistant uh, silicone gasket sealer on that cover. So we'll use the, uh, the die grinder and, and uh, basically clean up this whole surface area all the way around, you know, keeping that uh, differential covered up with the, with the shop towels. And uh, that'll keep as much of that dirt load out of there as we can. But we get that nice and clean so that uh, we have a good sealing surface again. So we'll get it cleaned up and we'll be back with you. 
Okay, I've hit that surface area, that cast housing there where the cover goes with the uh, die grinder and uh, the roll lock disc. So I got that all cleaned up and uh, got the rust all off. It's ready for uh, cleaning up with, I usually use ether or uh, brake clean on this. But uh, before you take the cloths off, what I would do is uh, hit, hit, these, uh, hit these holes with that ether. And uh, then use a blow gun and uh, blow out the dirt and crap that's in them because a lot of that stuff will end up getting pushed around by your bolts but I usually clean that up before I take off the uh, take off all the uh, cover on that differential again I'm just trying to keep the dirt load out of that differential and then when we're all done blowing out those dirt holes I'll take a can of uh, the brake cleaner ether and spray everything inside because there's a black film on everything inside it's oxidated oil and what I'll do is try and wash that whole thing down into the drain pan and that just helps give that new oil a, you know a chance so it isn't uh, isn't getting dirty right off the bat but I just try to clean out as much of that out of the housing as I can after I'm all done cleaning up that gasket area so we'll uh, take that cover off and I'll get back with you okay what I'm doing here I'm gonna take a can of brake clean I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hit everything inside there and uh, with that brake clean, what I'm doing is knocking down that oxidation, that black film that's on everything. And uh, that'll all drain out in the pan. And I'll use literally that whole can in there. Get everything nice and clean. So we'll do that and then uh, we'll get back again. Okay, I've sprayed a whole can of brake clean in there to clean up that housing, get all the oxidized oil off. And what I'll do is I'll take a, a shop towel with, soaked with uh, ether and go around that, that housing and just uh, clean up that surface area so that the uh, silicone sealant can adhere to it. And when you're done, you're going to have, you know, kind of a film of that left or, you know, what was on there is going to be on the rag so it's nice and clean. And then also up inside there, there's going to be a pocket of some of that solvent there. And what I do there is, is I just take a rag, a clean rag, and go in and soak all that up. And that'll be all the leftovers of that brake clean. And that'll get it all out of the housing. So, leaves the housing nice and clean and just takes a lot of the dirt load off of that fresh oil coming in. So, but I'll, I'll run that rag in there and use some more ether and I'll, I'll get it until it comes clean. So, just to remove the dirt load. So, that's how I prep that housing and we'll, we'll go to the cover next and I'll kind of show you what to do with that. Okay, this here is the cover from that 99 Tahoe differential, rear differential. And something I try to make mention to people is uh, there's a break-in period on differentials from when the time they're new. And usually in the first 15 to 25,000 miles they give off uh, metal on the break-in period of that differential. And that metal is real fine. You can see it here on this magnet. There's actually uh, you know, a pretty significant amount here. This particular vehicle had about 123, 24,000 miles on it. And this, I believe, is the original fluid. And you can see here, this is the break-in metals that I'm talking about. The magnet has collected most all that. But the problem with it is that magnet can only hold so much. And what happens is that that metal uh, gets into the oil and it makes it almost look like a metal flake paint if, if you look at the oil in, in sunlight. And what happens is that that real fine metal goes through your bearings. And I can show you here, this is a roller from uh, one of the bearings from a, actually another Tahoe, I think it was a 98 Tahoe, basically the same differential setup. And what happens is that, that uh, fine metal goes through those bearings over and over again and it bruises them. And when it bruises them, then they start flaking. And you can see this one here, you know, you can see the flakes that are taken out of it. And that one there, as soon as you hit the accelerator pedal, it was just screaming noise. And, uh, you know, we knew we had a bearing out. But basically you can see what happens to the race too. You can see all the flakes of metal out of it. And what happens is, is if that fine metal like you see on that magnet goes through these bearings over and over enough, it bruises them enough and eventually they start flaking out and you have a bearing failure. So you're wise if you do buy a new vehicle or if you just get one, you know, that, that may be used is to get that differential fluid changed. I mean it only holds, you know, at the most a gallon on the three quarter ton and one ton truck. So like on this one's probably about three quarts. So you're not talking about a whole lot of dollars worth, but if you got to rebuild that differential, you're looking at, you know, anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this, uh, this cover up. We're going to scrape the gasket off, 
we'll take a wire wheel, I got a motorized wire wheel and I'll take it to that and clean it up. And then we're going to get uh, that magnet all cleaned up and I'll use uh, I use ether or brake clean to clean up. You can see in here where the line was, where the fluid was, you know, it was getting oxidized, it's black, you know. But uh, we're gonna blow all that stuff out. We're gonna get as much of that magnet cleaned up as we can so we get that dirt load out of the system. But I just kinda wanted to show you that and make you aware of what goes on in that differential and why those bearings fail. So we'll clean this up a little bit and we'll get back with you. Okay, what I do, I've got this uh, surface all cleaned up and uh, I've taken it to the solvent tank and what I do is blow around that magnet. I basically, blow as much of that old metal out, that trap underneath, and around that magnet as I can. And I take a rag and I wipe it, wipe it out, just to just to get it out of the system. And I'll keep doing that, and I'll spray it with uh, starting fluid or ether, and do that again and again until I get everything around that magnet cleaned up. And I'll basically just you know spray it. and hit it with the compressed air again. And I'll do that again and again until I get it clean. And get all that metal out that I can. And once I get that clean to the point where I can't get any more out of it, then we're about ready to go back together. So, just something to help get the dirt load out and you know the best procedure I've found over the years to do that. So. We'll finish cleaning this up and we'll get back with you. Okay, I've got that cover completely clean, got the magnet all cleaned up. And I uh, wanted to show you the, the uh, silicone that I use to seal up those differentials. What I'm using is a Loctite Ready Gasket and it's uh, powertrain fluid resistant. That's what you got to look for. Uh, you got to have something that will stand up to the synthetic fluids that you're using it against. And I've been using this stuff for the last probably 10 to 15 years. Another product that's out there is Right Stuff. And uh, that's one that is basically the same. It'll do about the same thing as this. Uh, not cheap. It's a very, very expensive bottle like this. is usually in the 12 to $15 range. And it's about 7 ounces. But uh, it's what you need to seal these back up. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention was uh, this differential's got little ridges here that are uh, pressed into it when they made the cover. And that's what pressed against that gasket. And we're going to put a coat on here. And I usually put a coat on uh, not quite an eighth inch thick, just enough to give me some good squeeze out all the way around. I don't want a whole lot of squeeze out. But uh, we'll go ahead and get that coated. we got the housing, differential housing all cleaned up and ready to accept this. And this stuff sets up fairly quickly. You've got you know, probably 10-15 minutes to work with it. So, But uh, just to give you some idea, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and coat this, this cover and we'll get back with you. Okay, I've got the silicone sealing on there. And you can see I've got a, a nice coat all the way around. It's not real thick, probably about not quite an eighth of an inch. And uh, just enough so that it squeezes out and seals real well. So we're going to go ahead and put that on and uh, we'll get back with you. Okay, one thing I've done to give myself uh, a little bit more clearance to work on the top part of that pumpkin, because that spare tire uh, likes to get in the way of getting any uh, sockets on there. So I took a floor jack under the hitch part of that and uh, basically raised up the suspension use as much of that suspension as I could to get that tire up and away from that differential and that kind of opens it up nicely for me. But the other thing is those bolts are uh, basically they're about a 5 16 bolt and I'm giving them, if you're going to torque them down with a torque wrench, I'll give them about 15 to 20 foot pounds of torque. And uh, I got enough of that silicone around, it's squeezing out uh, you know, pretty much all the way around here, just enough to make sure that I got a good seal. So. But uh, that's what I want to see all the way around is just a nice little film, and I'm I'm seeing it pretty well all the way around here on this. So, but uh, I'll let that set up here for a few minutes, and then uh, what we'll do is fill up the differential, and the fill plug is on the side of the differential, passenger side, and uh, you got this cast uh, flash piece right here on the side of that differential, and you can see right there is the drive shaft. But you take out that uh, plug there, it's a 3 8 uh, socket head, basically a 3 8 ratchet will take it out. And uh, we'll fill it up here, basically up till it comes out of there. And we're going to use that Amswell 75W90 synthetic severe gear. And uh, <clears throat> the other thing I didn't mention is if you've got a limited slip differential, you got to put an additive in. And uh, I'll mention that here a little later in the video too. But uh, this was an open differential, it didn't have a, a posi track differential. So. But uh, we'll go ahead and fill this up and we'll get back with you. Okay, here's uh, some of the new oil, the 75W90 Amsoil Severe Gear. 
And I just wanted to show you a comparison of that with what I took out. The stuff I took out is uh, quite a bit darker and if, if I hold it up in the sun it's, it looks like metal flake paint. I can't really get the gist of it with the sun shining on it. It almost looks like a mirror image otherwise I'd show you. But it was, uh, it was time to change it. Uh, again, that, that real fine metal, if you can see it in that oil, uh, it's at least 40 microns. That's about the limit of human vision. And the most damaging to your bearings is about 2 to 25 microns. So just to give you some idea of the difference in the color, and uh, we're pretty much done with this differential flush, but uh, give you some idea of the difference in the color of the fluids. So. Thank you for watching this video. We're pretty well done with this differential service. And again, the oil we used was uh, Amazol Severe Gear 75W90, and it resists the thermal runaway and uh, protects your, your differentials like no other. And again, we have the uh, 75W140 for the three quarter ton and one ton pickups as well. So I want to thank you for watching my, my YouTube video. And uh, also, if you want to find your fluid capacities, I've got uh, links on this video and all my videos to the website that I've set up that'll uh, direct you to, to uh, Amzol's online product guide and it gives you all the fluid capacities of your vehicle's differential, transfer case, uh, engine, coolant, all that. And you can, you can print it off for each vehicle. So be sure to check that out and uh, I want to thank you again for watching my video and have a great day. Thank you for watching my YouTube video. Please check out my other videos on my YouTube page. And I want to introduce you to Amzol's full line of synthetic lubricants. Uh, we have the most complete line of synthetics for your automotive and light truck needs uh, as well as heavy equipment and semis. Full line of synthetics been around since 1972 and you can check those out at www.donsoil.com. Also we have a page for looking up fluid capacities and that one is fluidcapacity.com and you can go in there and you can get all your fluid capacities of your vehicle. You can print off a list so that you've got all the capacities of your cooling system, your transmission, your engine, all those and have a great day.